Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Patient Reported Outcomes One Year After Immediate Breast Reconstruction, Results of the Mastectomy Reconstruction Outcomes Consortium, MROC Study, by PISIC et al., My name is Clara Lee, and I am an Associate Professor of Plastic Surgery and of Health Services Management and Policy at The Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, the United States. My oncologic specialty is plastic and reconstructive surgery. This study seeks to assess breast cancer patients' satisfaction and quality of life after post-mastectomy breast reconstruction and to compare autologous abdominal-based reconstruction to implant-based reconstruction. The study is important because of the rising numbers of women undergoing mastectomy in the United States. Also, prior to this paper, three important gaps in the literature have limited how much we know about reconstruction outcomes. First, most prior studies have focused on clinical rather than patient-reported outcomes. Second, many studies have not used validated measures specific to breast surgery. Third, most prior studies have not assessed preoperative quality of life or body image so it's been hard to attribute any changes in well-being to the reconstructive procedure rather than to differences in the patients. The study was a prospective observational cohort study. It was conducted at 11 mostly academic sites with 57 surgeons. The study population consisted of adult women with breast cancer who were undergoing mastectomy and immediate breast reconstruction with tissue expanders, implants, or abdominal tissue transfer. The population did not include those having mastectomy without reconstruction, delayed breast reconstruction, or other types of breast reconstruction, such as latissimus flap. It did not include patients whose reconstruction had to be removed. Patients completed a questionnaire before surgery and one year later. The questionnaire consisted primarily of the breast cue and PROMISE 29. The breast cue is a validated, condition-specific measure of satisfaction and body image, and it has become a common measure in studies of breast surgery outcomes. The PROMISE 29 is a validated measure of symptoms, such as depression, anxiety, and pain interfering with activities. Its use in this study enables comparisons to other disease outcomes. Multivariable mixed effects logistic regression models were developed, with type of reconstruction as the primary variable of interest. Importantly, The models adjusted for baseline well-being. They also accounted for clustering by site and missing data at one year. The models also adjusted for social and demographic characteristics, comorbidities, cancer treatments, and unilateral versus bilateral surgery. A total of 1,632 patients were included in the analysis. 70% of patients had implant-based reconstruction, and 53% had bilateral mastectomy. Most patients, 88%, were white, and most, 95%, were not Latina. The first most important result is the comparison of one-year outcomes by type of reconstruction. Looking at the breast cue, autologous reconstruction was associated with higher satisfaction with breasts, higher psychosocial well-being, and higher sexual well-being. There were no differences by procedure type in physical well-being of the chest. Looking at the PROMISE 29, there were no major differences in symptoms, such as depression, anxiety, and pain interference by procedure type. The second important set of results is change in outcomes over time. Women having autologous reconstruction experienced improvements at one year compared to baseline in satisfaction with breasts and psychosocial well-being. Women undergoing implant reconstruction, on the other hand, experienced minimal difference compared to baseline. Sexual well-being at one year was similar to baseline for women having autologous reconstruction whereas it was lower for women having implant reconstruction. Physical well-being of the chest got worse for both types of procedures, and physical well-being of the abdomen got substantially worse for women having autologous reconstruction. Symptoms of anxiety and depression were better at one year for both types of procedures. 
Let's review the main points of this study and their implications. First, women who had autologous abdominal-based reconstruction had higher satisfaction and well-being than women who had implant reconstruction. This is a major finding which many plastic surgeons have suspected and which prior studies have suggested but not demonstrated in a rigorous manner. Based on this study, providers should counsel patients who are candidates for either approach that they may be more satisfied with autologous abdominal reconstruction. The finding also has important implications for payment policies since many current payment structures give surgeons greater incentive to perform implant reconstruction. The second important point of the study is that patients actually felt better about their breasts and well-being after they had mastectomy with autologous reconstruction compared to before. This is a somewhat surprising finding since mastectomy results in scarring and reduced sensation. The authors speculate that many women who had autologous reconstruction were overweight and may have experienced aesthetic improvements from reconstruction and or from breast reduction on the other side compared to their baseline. A related finding is that women who underwent mastectomy and implant reconstruction returned to their preoperative levels of well-being. Thus, reconstruction appears to have restored women's satisfaction and well-being after mastectomy. However, it's important to note that the study did not also follow women who had mastectomy without reconstruction or examine their degree of return to baseline. The study's important third point is that patients experienced substantial physical impairments regardless of what type of reconstruction they had. This finding points to the fact that neither mastectomy nor breast reconstruction is benign and involves morbidity, an important point to remember as rates of mastectomy rise. Patients need to be aware of these physical impairments and decide whether or not they feel justified. Providers should continue to seek ways to reduce the morbidity of breast cancer surgical treatments. It is important to note this study's methodological strengths. It had a large population and 11 sites, measured preoperative well-being, used validated measures, and employed appropriate analytical methods. However, it also had some limitations. Nine of the 11 sites were academic, many of the sites were urban, and the population did not have a substantial proportion of racial or ethnic minority women. Nonetheless, this study provides important evidence that patients undergoing autologous abdominal breast reconstruction experience better patient-reported outcomes than those undergoing implant reconstruction and that patients having mastectomy with reconstruction experience substantial physical impairments at one year. It will be interesting to see follow-up data from this study beyond one year. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.